Hey guys, this is uh, TKZ in Revlet Studio. Sorry I haven't been doing too many videos uh, just this lately. I've been uh, going through a really hard time with, uh, as you may have, may or may not know, that um, mother's just died recently and I was looking after her. But it, that was about a year ago from now. So I'm hoping from now onwards I'll be making a few more videos like I used to. Anyway, enough of that. Look what I've uh, created here. I can I can create a lot of uh, balls in me. Now, what I've actually created here is a you know my force field uh, script where it kept things outside a sphere. Well, if I pick this brick up, we've got a little brick in the middle there that's spawning all these uh, balls. Watch what happens. There we go. Oh bit too fast oh my god it's ball ballception blimey yeah so they are they they can only go within the sort of a sphere around this block so if I actually update the size of the sphere watch chaos so there we go and there we go so that might be a bit too small let's actually uh, make that a bit bigger that would do. So I've uh, also made it so I can actually have the effect anywhere in the game, but it does sort of uh, glitch out if I move it away from the spawner. I say 10, move it up. Let's try 50. This might cause it to go a bit funny, but we're fine. So yeah, it's the opposite of my force fields, if you like. And this only took me about uh, 20 minutes to make. The hardest bit was actually getting the uh, the balls to uh, uh, what do you call it? Stop at the border, where in this case it's the border of 50 studs from the offset, or if you like, 50 studs from the actual brick that's spawning the blocks, and then I've just offset it from that. And of course, just to show it is actually the script that's doing it. I can turn the effect off and now I've just created a fountain lovely <laughs> oh blimey chaos right anyway I'll show you the script behind it it's not much different to my um, my what do you call it my gravity uh, script that's also that's how I'm sort of holding the bricks or the parts there where I had my magnet if I can find it my models uh, where are we there's a magnet here somewhere where if you spawn it in it will attract other blocks to it or if you spawn another magnet in it will repel I'm basically using those forces to uh, control these uh, the metal balls I'm playing my balls yeah <laughs> oh my god it's creating a ring ball. My goodness. Yeah, as, as I was saying, uh, we can get into the uh, into the code. So, if I actually stop it for now. So that's the offset, and of course inside the actual part itself, that's the same thing, basically. That's just uh, how many studs away from this spawner. Where I've, I've got it 20 studs down, basically. This border sphere size is how uh, how how big you want the effect. Like if you want the balls to uh, sort of stop at a certain distance away from the block, as if it's it's hitting a a uh, what do you call it a sort of a, a surface. I've just created a sort of a sphere just for added uh, coolness, if you like, because uh, everybody does boxes or. Oh people I know anyway because they, they are easy this is actually really easy I thought it was going to be quite hard but it's just checking from the distance from the offset and from this block and then getting the distance between the two and then if it's a beyond that distance just pull it back and that's it done where the box you'll have to sort out the X Y and Z etc so the 
as I was saying, the code that I use for my magnet code, it is in this one, this reflect uh, function that took me a while to work out when I was trying to make those magnets or gravity, what was it now? It was gravity uh, spheres or something <clears throat> where I made those uh, cool, well I think they're called the uh, cool cinematic uh, things where things get ripped apart by this black hole and then it turns into a white hole and pushes everything away. It's basically just using that which is the dot product of two things of a vector if you like where you've got a surface normal which is basically what way the uh, the face is actually if uh, orientated like if you look at your screen you're 90 degrees from that screen that's just the that's just the normal if you like the surface normal and I'll take the input vector of that normal like if you throw I don't know your pen at your screen that would be the input input vector I don't know why I've got minus two there but I think it's just me playing around <laughs> and it seemed to work all right I think it's going to be some I don't know dot put up that well but I think it might be uh, reversing it or reversing the direction if you like where if it's uh, just normal it probably end up uh, I don't know just dis being right angles where the way I've got it at the moment it pulls it towards the vector or pushes it away so then after that I've got two uh, two objects which is hooking up these and if I change them it changes the default values in the script so you get real-time update with these functions here uh, that one and that one then I've got my create ball which is basically just creating a ball uh, for the effect and at this moment it only works on what I spawn it doesn't work with anything else in robots if you like but that is really quite easy to do it's just a matter of uh, creating a region 3 where I want it or where you want it if you like and then just running the script because it look, just looks at the distance between the parts and the center of the effect that's it then the script just works out the border and everything else which we'll get to in a little bit I find using a normal uh, while true do loop is actually too slow for this effect because it makes the balls uh, body parts jitter so I'm running this at 60 frames per second or as fast as my computer can run it and it looks uh, glorious I think so if I run it again so if I pull it up out of the floor look at that it looks like it's uh, they're held, held up by wires or something and that's all code so it, it, within the effect they are free to move what, however they like if you like but if they go outside that area the script actually pulls them back and pushes them by the uh, how far they've gone past the border and applies that as a velocity back so I wonder if I'll be able to uh, pick one before it disappears because I've got it on a 10 second uh, cycle if you like No, I don't know if you can see quickly down there the uh, orientation and everything else is changing very very quick I wonder if I can change that hold on and change the lifespan of these balls make them last a bit longer let's try 60 seconds so this will stop the uh, the spawning once it gets to I think 400 parts and this is definitely this will definitely beat my old computer that's for sure there we go we're done so let's have a look at a part inside here and the velocity is that now can I move it and we can see that I guess it does update brilliant because uh, beforehand it didn't used to update they must have changed something in the uh, Roblox's call and that's brilliant 
so yeah anyway we get back to the code because i remember i sort of go through my videos re-watch my videos and i don't talk about the code that much so hopefully this new format i'll actually go through the code itself so if you see a lot of math randoms here that is just to stop uh, the parts from sticking to if you ever spawn something on the same exact same spot with a bit of code you just get a line of particles well, I can show that if I actually do this uh, how can I do this let's just create a POS minus that <clears throat> so you could so you'll see what I mean there we go so it just gets over that until the actual part itself moves the spawner yeah so it's just a little fix or hack if you like so that's the reason why I got the math random there so it just uh, or just uh, what's the word randomizes the point where it spawns in there we go come on brain work will you <laughs> then after that I sort of check to see if the ball is actually being removed by my debris or by the debris system and if it is it removes it from the table that I'm using which is maples <laughs> table so I'm using a table find to find the part inside that uh, function function that table and then index finding the index of that and then just hitting table remove and that's it done simple as that and of course adding it to the uh, debris system so then we get onto the main heart of the uh, the code itself it's not much as you can see so we're running by I think it's about 60 frames per second it might be th might even be 30 I don't know but I know one of the services inside the run service or functions if you like or events run at 60 and another one runs at 30 I always forget those wrong that might be the uh, the 60 one that might be the 30 I don't know anyway I'll go through the table which I've added uh, the ball that I created from the, the above function it goes into the table and then when every time it goes through the loop basically this is all, all this is just an advanced uh, very fast while true do loop if you like so it goes through that in this case it goes through uh, 400 balls I don't know how many I think uh, if you play a, a game where I was just thinking if uh, if you have uh, I don't know a drink of cola or something or how many times I say balls in this video I think you'll be completely colored out by the time you finish this video <laughs> anyway back to the coding so as I was talking about the distance thing that is worked out by here so I'm taking the ball position and the south position which is the part the spawner itself plus the offset and then I'm just calling the magnitude of that vector simple then I'm checking to see if the distance of that is more than the border size if you like which is in this case 30 and if it is I call my reflect function which I talked about just now to get the vector like a to put it back into the center of the offset to give it the illusion that it's bouncing off the surface and that's basically what this is doing here that just uh, gives you a uh, normalized vector between like a 0 to 1 or minus 1 to 1 on the x y and z then I'm checking the border distance or finding the border distance and then finding that and setting the velocity to that border distance or the speed if you like or how far it's come away from the border and of course apply the uh, the the effect that pulls it back in then after that for loop we go to 
just to make sure that we don't get too many of the balls on the screen at once. I create the ball and this is the offset that I'm using. I'm just using the position plus the minus four uh, Y studs. That's it. That's it done. So it only took me about 20, 30 minutes max to get this uh, sorted. So hopefully after this video I'll be able to uh, get a few more videos out. And if I remember, this sh should be in the description by the time you, you watch this. If not, then uh, let me know. <laughs> anyway, if I sound a bit tired, it's because I've been up all night again. And I've just had my breakfast, had a coffee, so I thought I'd do another, vid another video. And this time I'm actually using uh, Broadcaster Studio to record. So, because things have been happening with my old recording uh, suite, it wouldn't record my mic or anything like that. So I just gave up on it. Anyway, this has been TKZ in Red Lot Studio on, I guess, my balls. <laughs> and I'll catch you guys later. TKZ signing out.